Uh, welcome back to Isle of Wight Bushcraft. And this time out, we're on an epic chaga hunt. We'll also be looking to find some chanterelles and other mushrooms. We see a pine martin. And we even get to do a bit of fly fishing for trout on a lovely highland loch. So stay tuned. Well hi folks, you join me here uh, in the, uh, the bonny highlands of Scotland and boy, what beautiful scenery all around me. We're up here for a chaga hunt and uh, we're in a good area. There's uh, plenty of water around. We've got the river down, the, uh, down in the valley. We've also got uh, several hillocks around. So we're in good wet uh, country, plenty of birch around as well. Um, and lots of old birch as well, old gnarly birch we've noticed. So um, we should uh, we should find some charga. That's what we're hoping. Uh, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to grab our things and um, we're going to uh, begin our search. So uh, yeah, let's go and see if we can find some.
the type of conditions that I'm looking for in order to try to locate some of the elusive chaga are preferably older birch tree woodlands. that slope downward toward a body of water, say a large lock or a river. I'm careful as well to check each tree both lower down and up above. But no need to check the branches though as chaga normally grows on the main trunk of the tree. Here's something that can send your heart into a flutter when seen from a distance. Uh, from a distance you think, oh that's a nice, uh, nice piece of chaga, but it's actually a, a burl. And some of these burls look very similar to chaga, but there is one distinctive difference. Um, even from a distance, you can tell. You'll notice that there's uh, moss growing on this burl, um, and I've never seen moss growing on chaga. So if you see a black lump with moss on it in a distance, um, it, it's a burl, not chaga. Yeah, as you can see, looks similar to a chaga from a distance, but. Um, that moss growing on it is a dead giveaway and if I just break a piece off you'll see that it, the outside of it does break off quite easily as well, the bark of the bow um, and that just wouldn't happen with chaga and again the, the chaga is black, you'll see it is jet black so yep, guess your heart a flutter from a distance <laughs> but uh, when you get a bit closer you realise you've been fooled And uh, also I'm going to uh, try and look for the, uh, the bigger chaga. Um, apparently the, uh, the bigger ones have got more nutrients in them. The smaller ones really haven't had a, much of a chance to concentrate the, uh, the nutrients of the birch bark. Now some of you might be thinking, well, what is chaga and why are you hunting it? Well, on that point, I'd encourage you to do your own research uh, on chaga, but medical, re uh, medical studies have been conducted which show that it's uh, boosts your immune system, very good for you, helps to stop getting colds and flus and that sort of thing, and uh, among many other uh, medicinal properties. I don't want to go too much into that because I'm not a medical expert um, in any way, shape or form. The only thing I want to say is, is uh, there are plenty of uh, resources online to do that, so do your own research on chaga. And if you do decide to uh, uh, use it. Uh, I mean if you're down south, I mean I'm on the Isle of Wight, it doesn't grow there at all because we're so uh, far north it, it grows here. Um, but if you do decide to uh, harvest it or buy it, please do so responsibly because there's only so much and it's very very slow growing. So uh, I plan to, um, if I do find some, uh, is leave at least some left on the tree to regrow. Unless it's a really old tree that's only got a couple of years left uh, there's no point in that because the chug would need longer than that to regrow so uh, let's go and see if we can find some <laughs> the other thing you need to be aware of is it's really only to uh, harvest it during the uh, the autumn or the winter when the uh, when the sap, when the sap is um, stopped flowing through the birch tree I think if you harvest it in the spring or 
summer it doesn't do the tree much good so yeah we're here in the uh, in the autumn now it's um, early October and uh, so it should be okay to harvest it this time of the year Well, we're just here in the in the uh, forest sloping down to the river and as you can see i'm just <sighs> just got that lovely lump of chaga and i've just taken this off as well i'm going to leave some on um to regrow but lovely scottish chaga <laughs> what a find i am uh, I'm over the moon with that. And also we've been finding some lovely chanterelles on this uh, on this um, sloped forest as well. But yeah. Now, I've never found these on the Isle of Wight, but as I say, we're up here in the heart of the highlands um, on this uh, mossy wooded slope under birch, and uh, there's quite a few chanterelles around. So, now, we had some of these last night as well, and we found some right outside the back of our cottage. So, we had those as a nice mushroom. So, chaga and chanterelles, <laughs> you can't get better than that. lovely bit of chaga. After venturing across the river valley and taking a short hike up the opposing slopes, it wasn't too long before we happened upon our second find of fine Scottish chaga. Obviously while we're at chaga hunting we're coming across some beautiful other fungi. This is the coral fungus and look at the beautiful 
saffron colours of that. Absolutely stunning. Beautiful colour. Beautiful colours. Absolutely beautiful colours. A real rich saffron. We've also come across this uh, orange peel fungus. I think it's the orange peel fungus. It could be elf cup. Um, I need to get back and positively ID. But uh, what again, beautiful, vibrant orange colour. Absolutely beautiful. God. As you can see, we're right by the side of this river and we have found a massive <laughs> amount of chaga. So, won't take all of this, we just haven't got room, but there's plenty here. So, I'm going to take some of this now. Lovely load of chaga. Just to give you an idea of scale, there's my axe. Huge! <laughs> and I'm a happy boy. There we go, lovely chaga, beautiful, and there's loads of it, really pleased, lovely piece of chaga. So here we are, here's the chaga that we've harvested, all dried out and uh, ready to use. Um, as you can see, we've gathered quite a lot, this will keep me going for around about two years now, so uh, yeah, very happy with that. We had had such a good day hunting for chaga in the beautiful forests and woodlands of the Scottish Highlands. And, to cap it all, we were visited that evening by this cute little fella, the very rare Scottish Pine Martin. I had never ever before seen this beautiful creature, so this was a rare treat indeed. Well, well, that's the end of the, uh, the chaga hunt, guys, and it's been uh, most successful, but uh, couldn't finish up without uh, doing a bit of uh, highland trout fishing on this beautiful lock. And uh, couldn't think of a more fitting way to end this chaga hunt. Hopefully, take a few nice brown trout home for the table.
Well, there we are, guys. A nice, uh, nice rainbow trout. Nice plump one for the table tonight. So that's a great way to end this uh, chaga hunt up in the Highlands of Scotland. So um, thanks for joining me, guys. And uh, all being well, see you on the next video. Take care and uh, bye for now.